Have you ever drowned your iPhone in a lake, sea, pool or even toilet? If you did, then probably you know that there is only a small chance of getting it working again. I decided to test my luck and bought water damaged iPhone 11. Was it a bad decision? Let's find out. This iPhone I bought on eBay a while ago and it was staying in my closet for almost a year. It was iPhone 11, yellow color, 64 gigabytes, and I bought it for crazy $279.85. The title was saying that iPhone was unlocked, weather damaged, no power. The detailed description was informing that iPhone got wet and was not able to power on. The photos of the listing were showing that the iPhone was in a pretty good condition with some minor scratches on the front screen. After reaching out seller, I found out that the phone got wet on a water ride at Disneyland while it was staying in a pocket. Seller also provided IMEI number of the phone and I confirmed that it was unlocked and iCloud free. After finding one year old parcel among the other parcels, it was time to unbox it! Here is water damaged iPhone 11, yellow color, it looks really nice. The front glass has one deep scratch across the whole screen. The back glass has some hardly visible small scratches and looks pretty good. Without a surprise, I have noticed signs of water on the front camera lens under the glass. No liquid signs on the back cameras, which is great. The bezels does not have any noticeable scratches or signs of use. Looks like the bottom screws were removed or at least tried to be removed before. As usual, the first thing I will do is to check IMEI number on the SIM tray if it matches IMEI number provided by the seller. It matched. Nice. I was trying to find water marker inside the SIM tray slot, but wasn't very successful. Now it's time to turn it on. As expected, the device is not showing any signs of life. Powering it up with a lightning cable is not an option, as I may fry the logic board. Now I can grab some tools and disassemble this iPhone. I will start by removing two bottom screws. Next, I need to apply some heat on adhesive tape, which holds the screen. With the help of my new suction cup, I can pry the screen up and separate it from the housing with a plastic card. Once it is done, I can open the screen to the right side and remove the metal plate, which covers battery flex cable. Next, I will remove metal plate, which covers screen flex cables. Now I can disconnect the battery and remove the screen. Next, I will remove the metal plate which covers back cameras and remove the cameras itself. No signs of water on connectors or lenses, which is great. Next, I will disconnect front camera with Face ID and remove it. Once it is done, I can proceed to removing SIM slot and disconnect all the flex cables which holds the logic board. Finally, the logic board can be removed and I can check how badly was the phone water damaged. Actually, I don't see any signs of corrosion on the logic board, except small watermarks on the back. This is great news. The front camera has some watermarks on the lens, no corrosion on flex cables. SIM tray has some signs of water on metal plate, connectors are looking intact. 
This crane module has lots of corrosion near the bezels and some weather signs on the metal parts. I can see lots of corrosion inside the housing, on the both sides, close to the battery. Let me put all components away and check if this screen module will show any signs of life. I will test it with another iCloud locked iPhone. All iPhone components are already assembled, so the only thing I need is to connect screen module to the logic board. Now I can try to turn it on. And... It works! Here's Apple logo! Awesome! I will also test touchscreen capabilities. Everything seems to work just fine. After confirming that screen works without any issues, I can disconnect it from iCloud locked logic board. A little bit of cleaning and it is ready to be used. Next I will proceed with the water damaged logic board. I went to my friend who repair electronics to check if there is no short circuit on the logic board by applying low voltage with 0.04 amps. Luckily the logic board probably dried out because there was no short circuit. I don't know if any components from the water damaged iPhone works, so I would like to test the logic board with an iCloud locked iPhone housing. First, I will remove iCloud locked motherboard by unscrewing all the components that hold it and disconnect all the flex cables. Now the logic board can be replaced with water damaged one. I will twist a few screws, because anyway I will be removing this logic board again. I also put water damaged front and back cameras to test if they work. Once everything is in place, I can assemble screen module. It is showtime! Will it work? Yes, we got an Apple logo! Great! The iPhone is in restore mode, so I need to connect it to the MacBook and restore it with newest firmware. Once restore is done, we have a welcome screen message. Next, I will proceed setting up the phone. Activation was passed and initial setup was fully completed. The iPhone is showing two error messages. Battery is not original and there is issue with Face ID. After trying to activate Face ID, the iPhone informed about problem with TrueDepth's camera. I will try to fix that later. All the cameras seems to work fine. IMEI of this iPhone matches IMEI located on a SIM tray, which is great! Now I will turn the iPhone off and check if I can do something with Face ID issue. I will start by removing the proximity sensor from screen module and check if it has signs of water. There were still some signs of water, but not that much. After cleaning all the components with isopropyl alcohol, I proceed assembling it back. Here is second try of Face ID and still not working. 
Now I will proceed with the housing of the water damaged iPhone. First, I will remove the old adhesive tape which holds the screen module. Next, I will apply some isopropyl alcohol on places where the corrosion was visible. Once it is done, I can put a cloud-locked logic port into the housing and test water-damaged components. Let me try to turn it on. Nothing. Hmm. What about connecting with the lightning cable? Now we are talking. I will test the silent switch, power button, speakers, volume up and volume down buttons. Surprisingly, everything works fine. Now I will turn the iPhone off and remove a cloud locked logic board from the housing. Next, I will remove water indicators from the housing and LCD screen. Once the screen module is cleaned from water signs, I can proceed to removing the original water-damaged iPhone from testing housing. Now I will place water damaged logic board into the original housing and assemble all the components together. Next, I will apply new adhesive tape. Once it is done, I can put back the LCD screen and connect all the flex cables. Finally, I will twist all the screws back to its place and close the screen module. Now I will do some additional tests in order to find any issues on the iPhone. Unfortunately, Face ID is not working on this iPhone, but I decided to leave it that way and do not spend more money on fixing it. After checking the battery, I found out that the iPhone has 88% of the maximum capacity. Third-party app showed me that the battery has 320 cycle counts. Now let me share the numbers of this project. The water-damaged iPhone 11 costed $279.85. Shipping costed $9, tax was 0, so totally I spent about $289 for a water damaged iPhone 11. Just a reminder, I bought this iPhone almost a year ago and tried to fix it only now. I could invest another $70 to fix the Face ID, but I considered not to. I can try to sell this iPhone for $200 up to $250. But instead, I will give it as a present to someone from my family. Still, I am very happy that I was able to finish this project and recover iPhone from water damage.
If you like this video, smash that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe button. And I see you in the next one.